Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, um, I'm trying to do a little bit of a tribute to one of the greatest fly fishermen of all time, uh, Lefty Cray. Uh, at that note, I'd like to have a quick moment of silence. Bless his soul. Rest in peace, brother. Okay, the show must go on. Interaction is going to be a little limited because uh, once we go from this screen to the next one, you're going to see we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a dub over with Lefty's voice over top of uh, my tying. Uh, and like I'm saying, it's live. But the interaction is not going to be there other than with our producer in the background here. He's going to be able to follow along with all your questions and answers and so on through uh, text tonight. On, uh, on interaction <clears throat> on um, either YouTube or uh, Facebook. I, I think we're going to be doing this one on Facebook. Or we're doing it on Facebook. I'm getting the nod from the producer right now. Anyhow, uh, this is uh, one of Lefty's greatest flies that was ever made by him. I mean, there's, there's tons of different patterns. Tons of books. Tons of videos. But uh, I, I've used this pattern. It works like a hot darn. And... Uh, I'm going to kind of get things ready here. It's called the Deceiver, in case you guys don't know what it is. Lefty, this Lefty's Deceiver. And uh, hopefully this turns out okay. So I'm going to grab a... We're going to start off with a Mustad hook. We're not going to go down there yet. Because once I go down there, it's showtime. So we're going to start off with a Mustad. Uh, 5 or a C52S BLN. Uh, I'm not 100% if that's the... the hook that he originally tied this fly on but you're gonna want a nice long shank with a, a straight eye off the end and it kind of ties everything together so what I'm gonna do we're tying with a uni thread today in uh, olive and in, in six aught and then <laughs> as you can hear we're pretty busy here in the store today but uh, what he liked to do is start a little bit of thread up on the hook itself here as you guys are watching down the bottom just to put a little bit of grit on there color the hook a little bit and then he would go to the back end here and tie a little bit of a dam and this is something that you kind of build up to and at this point we're going to cut in lefty here hopefully if we can we're going to get the producer here cue the other video there we go here's one of my all-time favorite deceivers is first of all if I I put a bump back here right at the back end that bump helps me when I'm putting these feathers on I don't know why this works but if you just kind of go in here and grab some feathers just go in and pinch them and take them out like this and roll them like that when you clip those things off I don't know why this works, but usually you'll end up with maybe a minimal amount of trimming with these feathers all nicely flared like this. Now, once in a while you'll have to, but that really is set up right now. But I just put the, the, the fuzz on the feather right in front of that little bump. And like Bob said, make two loose wraps and then pull. That'll stay right where you put it. Then make a couple good tight wraps. Now what I do is, Bob, give me some of that uh, fancy stuff you got over there. Um, I generally use, on this fly, I generally use rainbow or, or and pearl. Uh, pearl. These are the two I generally use. What I do when I tie this in, I wet it. And if you know, that all stays together now. Then I can just lay it up here, make one loose wrap and pull it, and it'll stay right where I want it to go. I'll alter that later. Then I go back and do a little bit more. And I like to use wetting this stuff. This is definitely you can work with marabou the same way. If you wet this, it stays exactly where you want. Now I'll put a few more strands of rainbow. And again, if you wet this stuff, 
it comes down and sticks together and it's easy to tie and I'll put a few strands of this over here on that mm -hmm. side and a few on this and then what I didn't use Bobby you can have back like Bob says we use any given materials <laughs> now before I finish this go further on up what I will do is take this stuff and I will fold it up and let me cut it at different lengths and then always make sure that you leave some of it stick out the back end about a half an inch now I don't do anything to the middle of this fly I simply just move it up until it's about a quarter way from the end of the hook shank one of the most important things in tying deceivers is the type of hair bucktail you use if you notice this is really a very very small bucktail I like real short hair and very very fine hair and in order to tie a deceiver nicely I think you need three steps to put the collar on so what I do I just pull a little bit of this back from here and clip it off now this would be what I'd say is a medium fly tie uh, I would make it less of this if I wanted a real sleek fly and I'd have fewer feathers back here if it was a bulky fly I'd tie in more feathers back here what I'm going to do is an average so what I do is what Bob was doing just cleaning the fluff out of here now I do something here that Bob doesn't do what did you do with my head with my head cement <laughs> <laughs> what I do on any fly that I have that has a wing of hair what I do is I cut this on an angle and then what I do is I touch this and just touch a little bit of glue to that now if I lay that down there and do what Bob was saying make just two or three wraps like this and pull that stays right where I put it but I'm driving that glue all the way to the hook shank now if I go back that's on that side now I'm gonna put it on this side So I'm just repeating the same thing on the other side. Put this up here, make two loose wraps or three, and pull, and that stays right where I put it. What I do now is take a liberal amount of your flashaboo and cut it off and bring it up and tie it in right here for gills. Now, one of the things I think is important is that you trim this so it does not go to the hook shank. I found that if, it, if you make this go back to here, sometimes that clogs the point and you'll miss strikes with it. Now what we do, this is one of my favorite of all deceivers, is to take ordinary uh, chartreuse bucktail, and again, you don't have to use much, and this is going to be the topping. So I'll put one, two, and that. Now put this up here, and then just wrap this forward and because I cut all my deer hair on an angle my head is tapered and now if I whip finish like I was talking about and you can see how quick it is to whip finish this thing and then to, before I put the glue on if you now take a mustache comb and comb this stuff all this bucktail and all flow together and without adding any um, uh, head cement to this Turn the mic back on. Okay. Well, as you can see, an old lefty, he can tie pretty quick. <laughs> and he's tied, he's tied, he's tied a lot more than I have of this one pattern, but and I think it worked out okay. But what that he does that I'm not about to do is lick this fly because <laughs> I know <laughs> the stuff that they put into these things for uh, preserving them is not something you want to put in your mouth. And I don't recommend it. Although, Lefty did live to a ripe age of 93, I'm not about to stick this fly in my mouth. So, anyhow, we've got the basis done right now. And hopefully it turned out okay. But, one thing I'm going to do is a little bit of an improvement to Lefty's pattern. And that's by using a little bit of modern technology in solar res. We're going to build this head up a little bit. We're going to throw some eyeballs on it and then we're going to go and fish it just to see how it works. But you can see like I'm just building the head up a little bit with my olive thread and 3 aught. I mean if you had uh, 3 aught would be better. I'm using 6 aught right now. But you just want to build that head up a little bit. And at this point it's starting to really look pretty. 
build her up a little bit. So we got that little gill. Everything's looking nice. It's all up on top. We've got the hint of chartreuse. We've got the white on the underside here. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit, make it look right. At that point, I'm just going to lock it down in here. Then I'm going to go back, grab my whip finishing tool. And I'm just going to whip finish this off quick. And I'm going to swap threads real quick. Because if you ever watched Lefty Cray's videos, they were filmed, and I, I think most of them were filmed in the 70s. And uh, digital, digital video really wasn't at the point where it should have been at that point. So a lot of his videos were on the borderline of uh, black and white, lacking color. So I'm going to take this, and we're just going to make a little gill on the head. It's a bit of a signature thing for me and my epoxy minnows. I'm going to take this guy, lop it off nice and tight. I'm going to whip finish this guy. And when you put the uh, solar res over top of this, it's going to make almost like a glass head. I mean, for you guys that are still using epoxy, I highly recommend this stuff. So we get these sheets of eyes from uh, Chinook Wind Outfitters. They're super cheap. I think they're about a buck and a half or two bucks. Don't quote me on that. But if you go to their website, ChinookWindOutfitters.com, they've got a great list of them. So today we're going to be using second of the sizes and the smalls. I'm just going to press that on one side. And then I'm going to go around to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. You can get funky and do like one eye orange, one eye blue, whatever you want to do. But I just always found that if you keep them the same, they seem to work a little better. Get all googly-eyed. You take those two. Slot them in place. Give it a little look from the front. Make sure that they're even. Because the next point is when they're on there, they ain't moving. So, we've got this great stuff from Solarez. Can you see that okay there? Take a little bit of this UV resin, slap it on the top of the hook like so, and you're going to see the magic happen here real quick. At this point, you want to loosen off your mongoose vise, Griffin. That's what we're tying on today. I love those folks over at Griffin sending us vices. I think they sent us five or six of them now. Most of the tires, except for Scotty's, running one. Scotty's on a stone fall. I believe they're made in Italy. Great vices as well. I'm a bit biased to Griffin being that I use one. Tell you, being able to tie on a full rotary vice versus a year old standard uh, stationary vices, I tell you what a difference makes things so much easier to get on. So all I'm doing here is that while this stuff is pliable, I'm going to work it around a little bit just to make sure that that head stays nice and round, have a quick look from the front, make sure it's uh, not going to be pushing more water to one side or the other. And at that point, we've got the uh, UV light, and you're going to see how quick this stuff cures. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so that's cured already. And what I like to do now, just to blend everything together, I like to use the bone dry, which is a super, super thin. And you can take that and kind of just tap it into the back here. And it just kind of blends that head into your fabrics a little bit better. And it really is pliable, this stuff. Breathe. And it gives it that gloss coat that everybody wants. Okay, at that point, we're going to finish this fly. I know a lot of the other guys have got a few real nice patterns for us tonight. I believe Scotty Holmes is, he's running a little bit behind tonight, but I believe he's got a beautiful pattern that Lefty Cray is also tied. I'm pretty excited to watch it. But anyhow, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 
that is lefty deceiver we'll go back up to camera three we're up top number three yeah scene three back up top we got a new guy on the cameras back control there but anyhow i just uh i wanted to do a little bit of a tribute fly hopefully it works out okay um to, for me it's uh, lefty played a big part in my professional fly fishing career i read almost every one of his books i've watched almost every single one of his videos he had a way of communicating that kept things very interesting and entertaining yet very informative and on that note we're going to sign out with a, a quick note from our sponsors and uh, enjoy the rest of the show ladies and gentlemen scene five friday night flies would like to thank the following sponsors superfly solarez chinook wind outfitters dr slick griffin stonefoe